Hi everyone, my name is Ezgia. I'm an entrepreneur and a student at Robert College. Over the course of years, I realized that the world we are currently living in and exhausting terribly is a give and take world. And I'll be explaining my journey of coming to terms with this, but first, I'd like to ask you a simple question. When was the last time you sheltered a dog, planted a tree, or teach something to someone just for the sake of helping, and as a result to become happy, not for religious reasons, cultural or work-related requirements, but just because you felt like it? Can you remember? Even if you do, I really don't think that it holds a dear place in your heart. Yes, we work hard every day to be a part of a better future. To be politicians, engineers, scientists, teachers or musicians. However, the effort we spend in academic fields can only take us so far. So if I were to say to you that your life and your future don't depend on how hard you work for yourself, what would you think? Do you think the towers you'll build, the shopping, the stores that you'll open in shopping malls will have this kid living just a few feet away in his family's makeshift house? Everybody knows this kid. Maybe not in this context, but I'm sure you know him. His name is Bunyemin. He's the kid who once in a while stops by your car to wash the windows. Or the kid who, as many may refer as rudely offers you a package of tissues. Or the kid occasionally, who occasionally disrupts the community by playing football with his friends while shouting recklessly. He is the kid who is trying to be a kid, a normal 10-year-old. Yet he is nothing but normal. He has a great ability in math and he is one of the few people I've, I've ever seen in my life that could learn so quickly. I'd never be able to forget the day when his father came up to me and, while crying, begged me to teach his 10-year-old son reading because he couldn't read and therefore cannot teach. The girl on the right is Acacia. She's 11 years old and has three siblings. Her parents worked and nobody wanted to look after her siblings so she had to volunteer. She had to drop out of school and didn't even know that she had to bathe his three siblings and realized this unfortunate fact when despite their efforts to hide, my friends were a bit uncomfortable by the smell. This is Ur. And I can confidently say that he belongs to a history class in a university. Not here, where he's forced in a classroom with 40 students. Now you might wonder, why am I telling you these? I'm telling you these because the first day when we got there, the old man who was responsible of looking after these Roman kids, a minority in Turkey, lectured me and my friends in front of these little children and said, my little Romani friends, please don't upset your fellow brothers and sisters who kindly volunteered to help you in your schoolwork. They hate, I repeat, they hate you. You are the responsible ones here. Teach them that you are not the gypsy criminals the society thinks you are. Now, as you might guess, I was shocked. But in reality, I think he was right. It's a fact that some groups of people are being cast out of society just because we think they like the background. It's a fact that we pity the poor and disabled. And so we'd like to send a text message to the number that appears on the screen while watching our favorite TV show to relieve our minds of the guilt. It's a fact that we pay a little amount of money to some famous organizations and leave the rest of the work to be done by them. And it's an undeniable fact that we just witness this vicious cycle of lost generations. You might wonder again, who am I to tell you these in a so-called eye-opening manner? Unfortunately, to do social service is something that didn't dawn on me one day and forced me to help the society. My school required me to do social service and I cannot be more thankful. I didn't realize that not only helping, but doing this on my own, 
taking things in my own hands gave me an immeasurable amount of joy and a sense of accomplishment when I first did a project with the deaf children in my first year of high school. I found out that I was living in the dark, that I was so consumed by the comfort of my own life that I didn't see what took place in the world. And only after unraveling the curtain of ignorance, I could see what society lacked. It lacked compassion, knowledge, and most important of all, a sense of sharing, which should be, na uh, which should be present in the very nature of humanity. I hear a lot of people saying, are you going to save the world, end the poverty, educate people, and so on. And my answer is, of course not. Because I can't achieve something on my own. My abilities are restricted as anybody. I need people to help me in my pursuit to construct the basis of our future society. A Turkish proverb goes, Bidenin nesi var, ikerin sesi var. Meaning, one cannot achieve something alone. People add on to what other people can offer, and only then the result can be perfect. As a person who, is, who experienced that people from different racial, ethnic, and economic backgrounds can at the end of the day sit at the same table and eat the same food, I can confidently say that with really believing in a better future, everybody can feel the same joy I had and continue to have. Moreover, there are some studies on the psychology of helping which proves that humans, by nature, feel at ease and happy when they help one another. It's always easy to complain and hard to actually take an action. It's always easy to put to blame on the corrupt system, or groups, or people. Yet I believe that with a little effort, everybody can change the society. Okay. So I challenge you to take that kid who bangs on the streets, or the kid who washes your car's window, or the kid or the woman who sells flowers and when faced failure gets really upset and sign them up to a school or to a place where they can learn a craft to earn money or feed them during lunch and basically give them an opportunity to shine. Not just by the means of organizations or schools which offer community loan projects just like mine, but personally to benefit from a better future. Um, okay. So, I can assure you that I'm not the only one who feels these concerning things regarding these issues. Uh, by doing this project, I witnessed the light disappearing from the Romani kids' eyes even though they weren't harming anybody, just because they are shunned by society and it was up to us, a number of people, no more than the fingers of hand, to change it. Just imagine. These were the words from Kuran Chaykach, the second leader of the Roman Chojik Larissi uh, and this was a part of his journal. These were the kids who were forced to grow so fast compared to their peers. And in fact, like, it, wouldn't be wrong so, it wouldn't be wrong for me to say that I grew a lot by doing these projects. It taught more than I realized to me. So, Journal your experiences like we had and go back to it whenever you like to remember the times that you actually changed and made, made a change in society and see what you can actually achieve. This tool you see here is, has always been my third and sword. The influential power of it cannot be compared with others. However, sometimes the only product left behind is on paper. It's time to take the initiative to do something and actually change the world or the society. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others, said Mahatma Gandhi. It's time we realize that it's a give and take role. Without giving and sharing, we cannot take and benefit. It's obvious that baby steps can lead us to a bright future. So why not start now? Thank you.